Okay, this is seventh grade, lesson three, and it's on missing numbers in addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So, we're gonna be working with problems that have missing numbers in it. For example, something that looks like this. Two plus what, and I'll put an N, just for our example, equals five. Okay, these are some of the problems that we're gonna be working with today. And um, there's an easy way to figure this out, okay? There's actually three different ways that you'll see a problem like this. You'll see it like this, two plus n equals five, or n plus three equals five, or you will have both add-ins, and we talked about that the other day, equals n. So my n just stands for what? What number are we missing? Okay, you can put any letter in there, and a lot of people do. They'll use any letter, so whatever letter you want to make up. Some people like W because it means what. Um, so whichever, that's fine. Okay, but what I want you to know is that whenever you're having a missing add-in, okay, remember these two numbers right here are called add-ins? Okay, whenever you have a missing add-in, okay, what you're going to do to get that answer is to always take your highest number and subtract it from the lowest number. So for example, I'm gonna take in this problem my highest number minus my lowest number, and what do I get? Three. So I know that n equals three, okay? But always, don't ever just stop there. Always take the number that you think it's gonna be, put it back in there, and ask yourself, does that make sense? Well, clearly these are easy problems because they're just using very simple math. Okay, all right, and again, because this is a missing add-in, we are going to subtract. So we're gonna take the highest number, five, subtract it from the lowest number, and what would we get, Isaac? Two. Two. Okay, let's put two back in there. And as you can see, that was pretty simple, okay? And these ones we actually work with often. This is our normal basic math, math patterns. So this one's not hard, you would just do two plus three and get your answer for five, okay? All right, so when you're working with missing add-ins, you always subtract to get your answer, okay? But you're also gonna have problems that are a little bit harder. For example, they have multiple add-ins. For example, okay, what do you think you would do here, Isaac? I would add the actual numbers first. Okay, so let's add up 3 plus 4, 7, 7 plus 8, 15. Okay, so now the problem says 7 plus n plus 15 equals 40. All right, I'm going to go on and add up this 7 and 5, and we would get what? Uh, 22. Very good. 22, and then we just got our n left over, plus n equals 40. Now we're back to the start where I was just talking about in the very beginning. You will just need to try to find out this add end. And when we're trying to find the add end, what do you do? Um, oh, you subtract. Subtract. So we're going to take the biggest number, 40, subtract it from the smallest number. And as you can see, we would get 18. Okay? But do I stop there? Um, no. What should I do with this 18? You do n equals 18. You in, well, you would say n equals 18, but you put always 18 put it back in the problem, yeah. good. And let's check, does 22 plus 18, 22 plus 18, does it equal 40? Yes. Yes, it does. Very good, okay? So that's how you would work that. Now, let's work with missing numbers in subtraction. For example, hmm, let's do, let's use the same pattern that we were doing. In minus three equals two, five minus n equals two, and then five minus three equals n, okay? These are the three ways that you are going to see these problems, all right? We have a missing, do you remember what this one is, Isaac? Do you remember what this one is called, the very first number listed? Here's the ones that you can look, look for them. Subtrahend, Menu end and difference. Subtrahend. Almost. Menu end. Menu end. That's the one you're minusing from. Okay? 
Now, <clears throat> there are two ways that you can look at this, okay? You can just know in your head that when you have a missing menu end, what you're going to do is add. And if you need to write that down, if you have a missing menu end, the first number, whether it's listed written like this, if it's your first one missing, you will always add. And you can just add up. They call it adding up menu end. Okay? So you would go 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay? And so we would change our end to 5. And so does 5 minus 3 equal 2? Yes. So we know we got it right. So if you want to write down that note that when there's a missing menu end, first number, you will always add the two numbers that you do have to get your answer. Okay? Now, let's look at the missing subtrahend. All right, we worked with the menu in. I'm going to mark that one out. Now we're working with the subtrahend. Okay, when you have a missing subtrahend, what you're going to do is it's kind of weird, but you're actually going to subtract. Okay, so write that down. When you're working with subtrahend, you are going to always subtract. And I think it's easy to realize that subtrahend, subtract. See what I'm saying? So when you have a missing subtrahend, you're going to subtract. So you're going to take your highest number, 5, take away your lowest, minus 2, your lowest number, and I would get 3. Okay? My answer would be 3, so let's put 3 back up in here. And does that work? Does 5 minus 3 equal 2? Yes, it does. Okay, so we've done it right. Okay, so now um, we come to a normal problem that you're always used to working. 5 minus 3 equals what? And those are kind of simple. You just count up 3, 4, 5. Okay? And that will be your answer. Now, sometimes you're going to come into problems. They're going to be really big numbers. For example, let's take, here's a good one. P minus 24 equals 17. Now, because I have a missing menu end, Isaac, mm -hmm. what am I going to do to get the answer? Add up. You're going to add up, okay? So Isaac's saying that it's P minus 24 equals 17. I'm going to add up. So what he's going to do is go 17 plus 24 and get the big number, okay? If you forget that that's what you're supposed to do with your menu in, then here's what you should do. Ask yourself, look at your biggest number. And you ask yourself, do I need a bigger number than that up here or a smaller number to get 17? Well. If I had something smaller up there, I couldn't take away 24 and get 17. I need a way bigger number up here to then take away 24 to get 17. You understand? Mm -hmm. In order for me to get a bigger number, do I add something together or subtract it to uh, get a bigger number? Oh, you add. You would add to get a bigger number, okay? And you would subtract to get a smaller number. But we're wanting a bigger number, so then we would add, okay? So we're just going to do 24 plus 17, okay? And you would get 41. Is that what everybody got? That's what mm -hmm. you got? Okay. Good job. So then we would test it. And once you finished and get that number, you would then put it in here in this spot. 41 minus 24. Does that equal 17? Well, let's try. Yes, it does. Okay? So that's how you work with missing numbers in subtraction. Okay? Now... Let's go to missing numbers and multiplication, okay? Missing numbers and multiplication look like this. Three times, now remember that dot in the middle means times. Three times n equals six, okay? Another way you might see it is n times two equals six, or three times two equals n. Those are the three ways that you will see a missing number in multiplication, okay? Now, Whenever you have a missing number in an add-in, I mean in a, a factors, okay, remember these two things are called factors. Both your numbers and multiplication are called factors. Whenever you have a missing number in factors, of your factors, you will always divide. Write that down. You will always divide. You will divide your biggest number divided by your smallest number, okay? So these are two numbers that we're working with, and because the missing add-ins, we will always divide. So therefore, 3 will go into 6 two times. Okay, 
So, as you can see, when we divided 6 divided by 3, we got 2. And when we put 2 back in there, it did work. Okay? Again, we have another missing factor. Remember, these are called factors. This one was missing up here. Okay? And now this one's missing. Still, if you have missing factors, what are you going to do? You will always divide. Divide. So, I'm going to take my biggest number, 6, divide it by my smallest number, 2, and 2 will go into 6 three times. That's our answer, so we put it back in here, and does it work? Yes, three times two is six, okay? And this is a normal problem that you always are used to working. Um, you just have a letter at the end saying what number is the equal to that. So three times two equals six, all right? So um, those are pretty simple. All right, last one, missing numbers in division, okay? When you have missing numbers in division, okay, just like subtraction had three different um, wordings for each of our numbers, so does um, division. So let me write down the three numbers, and I'm going to write it in this form. 24 divided by 3 equals n, okay? n divided by 3 equals 8. And then my last way of doing it is 24 divided by, th whoops, <laughs> divided by n equals all right, this is probably the most confusing to people, okay? And that's okay. So the first thing I want you to see is just like when we were working with, first let me tell you this, okay? We have three numbers when we're working with division, okay? So um, let me show it written out like this. 24 divided by 3 equals 8. Those are all three numbers that are going to be used in this, okay? And I wrote it in this form just to show you something, okay? Do you remember what this number is called? There are three different names it's for like each of the these divid the dividend? Yes, very good, Isaac. This one is called the dividend, okay? The dividend, okay? So for example, this another way we could see this is 24 divided by three equals eight, okay? So I'm just showing you three different ways Okay, now I want you to look at this. Dividend is on the N side. Remember that? It's also the first one listed. Okay, mm -hmm. whenever you have a missing dividend, you will always multiply. Write that down. Always. Okay, so this is my one that has the missing dividend because it's the first number on top or on the inside. This is the way we would see it, okay? This is the same problem written, okay? This is the missing dividend. This is the missing dividend, okay? What are we going to do when we have a missing dividend? We are always going to multiply. So we're going to multiply our two numbers that we do know, 8 times 3, 24. So let's put 24 in there, and does that work? Yes, it does. 3, we're going to 24 8 times. Got it? Okay. Now, that's if we have a missing dividend. What if we have a missing divisor? Okay, which one shows me a missing divisor? This one? Okay, yeah. let's look at that one. This one says 24 divided by n equals 8. This 8 is our answer, which is called the quotient. Okay, whenever you have a missing divisor, you are going to divide. Divide. Okay, remember when we have a... Um, like we were talking about, when we have a missing subtract here, we're going to subtract. When we have a missing divisor, we're going to divide. All right? So, um, what two numbers are we going to divide? 24 and 8. Bigger number divided by the smaller number. 8 goes into 24 three times. That's our answer. Let's put it in and see if we're right. Will 3 go into 24 eight times? Yes, it will. So, we know we've got it right. Okay? So, if you want to take some notes... When you're working with your missing divisor, which is the one that you're dividing with, this one right here is your divisor, the one you're dividing with. When that one's missing, you will always divide. And I'm going to write that down and star it. Okay? And those are the four different methods of math and how to work with missing numbers.